Okay, it is Thursday, January 14th, 2021, and this is for Science of Cooking. Today we're going to be doing, for class, a homemade granola. Um, so the recipe is going to be attached in the comments of this video, but also for your students in your Google Classroom. Okay. Um, so it is a recipe, but it is a very flexible recipe. Uh, so you're going to be able to have a lot of input on what goes into the actual batch of granola that you're making, right? So you can make this different every time that you make this, okay? So if there's something you like, something you don't like, you can decide what ingredients that you put in, okay? So first up, you're going to need a large mixing bowl and some kind of spoon, so a good wooden spoon, right? Something sturdy. Um, and we're going to be starting off with some oats, okay? So I'm going to be using... Just some quick oats. You can use rolled oats and things. Store brands fine. Um, we're gonna do two cups of oats. Okay. It's gonna make up the majority of our mixture here, and then we're gonna be adding a lot of fun ingredients into it, right? So we've got one. We've got two on the oats, and I'm just gonna take and set this to the side. So now we're gonna talk about nuts going in this, right? So I'm gonna use pecans in. This granola today, but you could use almonds, you could use walnuts, right? Macadamia nuts, hazelnuts, you know, whatever you happen to have on hand, right? Um, and these are actually pecans I had left from a previous recipe we did a while back that I had in the freezer, right? So the best way to store nuts, because they are super expensive, is to freeze them, okay? Um, nuts have natural oils in them that can go rancid over time, so if you're stored someplace where it's warm, uh, they tend to spoil, right? And you don't want to waste your money. So I am going to do the pecans today. I'm going to do a generous half a cup. Okay. Here. Because we're going to chop these. So these are whole pecans, right? I've got my cutting board set up here, so I'm going to put them right onto there. And I just want to do a rough chop, right? I want to have some texture left to these because I like the crunch, but I don't want them huge like this for a granola. Okay? If I was just snacking, whole would be fine. So you just want to do what we call is run your knife through it, right? So we want to do that rocking motion. You can keep your other hand up on top of the blade, right, as you're going through. You go one direction. It's good to bring them back together, right, and go the opposite direction. That way the nuts are getting evenly chopped, right? And like I said, I'm just looking for some texture to them. Um, that's not too big, but they don't have to be super small either, right? You can decide if you like things a little bit crunchier, you know, thicker texture, keep them larger, okay? Keep them whole even. So if something like this is fine. If you have any individual nuts that are too big, you can just come in and, you know, cut the single ones. Right? Now the nuts are going to give us a lot of that toasty flavor that when we add it into the granola, um, and a good source of protein, right? So we're going to take these, the knife our little scoop here so just scrape with that blade always at an angle right. and then we're gonna put that into the bowl so this is going into the bowl with the two cups of oats right so two cups of oats so far half a cup of chopped nuts and like i said with the nuts you can do any variation on that that you want now our next thing is also an ingredient that you can alter right so we're going to use sunflower seeds today, but you could use pumpkin seeds. You could use any kind of seed, something like that, that you'd like to give you texture, okay? Um, if you don't like the seeds, you can do another nut, right? So you could do pecans and walnuts. We're just going to try and keep the ratios of ingredients about the same. So I'm going to do a, just a quarter cup of salted sunflower seeds out of the shell. Okay, we don't want no shells. Just use your wooden spoon to give it a little gentle stir. Okay, and now we're going to add a little bit of sweetness, right? So this granola is not a very sweet granola. Uh, it's naturally sweet, right? We don't want to have a lot of added sugar to this because we're trying to have something that's a little bit on the healthier side right now. Uh, so I'm going to do some dried cranberries, okay? Uh, and there's a lot of variations of flavors with these, with pomegranate juice and all kinds of things. Uh, if you don't like cranberries, you could use dried pineapple, dried mangoes, dried apple slices, banana chips, anything like that, um, you choose the fruits. That's why I said every time you make this granola recipe, you can make it completely different. Like I said I'm doing pecans and cranberries this time, but maybe I want to do walnuts and pineapple the next time, right? It's up 
last year. Okay, so we're just going to do a half a cup of the dried cranberries. Now, because these are small pieces, I don't need to chop them. Okay. You can. You don't need to. I'm just going to finish off the package there. Pack that in good. So a good packed half a cup, right? But they are small, so it's a good size for a granola. If you were using a larger fruit, like big pieces of dried pineapple, you'd want to chop those up into bite-sized pieces. Okay, so we're going to add this right into... Our mixture with our oats and our pecans and our sunflower seeds. And then we want to do is three tablespoons of honey. Okay. So this can also be changed. So I'm using honey in this recipe, but you could easily swap out for things like maple syrup. Okay. But if you're gonna use maple syrup, try to use maple syrup that's real maple syrup. Uh, the imitation stuff from the store right, tends to be very corn syrup based, doesn't have a lot of real maple flavor. Um, so, and plus if you're trying to eat a little bit healthier, you want more natural ingredients. So either honey or real maple syrup works perfectly for this. But honey is really sticky to measure, right? So what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of my cooking spray, and I've got my trash can right here. I'm gonna do this over the trash. I'm just gonna spray the spoon, give it a little squirt. Right? This way, the honey will slide right out of the spoon, okay? So I also took the little squeeze cap thing off of my little honey bear here, because otherwise you're gonna be here all day trying to measure out three tablespoons, so this goes much faster. Let's see how quickly that slides right up. Okay, so we have one, two, Okay, so this is going to give us a little stickiness. This is going to help give us some caramelization to our recipe. And then here, number three. All right. Make sure we get all that yumminess out of that spoon. I'm going to use the, I'm gonna wipe the spoon clean. we're going to be using this to measure out our coconut oil next. Okay, so I'm just going to set this aside. We're going to mix this all together in just a minute. Now, coconut oil, if you've never used it, is more of a solid form, right? So it is not a liquid, okay? So you think oil traditionally, you would think, you know, olive oil, things like that, canola oil, they tend to be liquefied. This is very thick and pasty, okay? So this is great. It's a healthy oil. Um, but the problem with it is that it is solidified. So it's similar to the texture of like a short vegetable shortening, right? So you're going to need to do a little bit of hand mixing with this to help warm that oil up so that it'll coat the oat, right? And I'll show you a close up of this so you can see. Okay, so we want two good tablespoons, but you can see the texture of that coconut oil, right? It is really thick. It is solid. Okay, so you want to make sure you have a nice solid tablespoon so you can use your hands for that. Make sure they're clean, okay, which we did before we started. And then I'm just going to put this right into the granola mixture. Now, we're going to do one more of those. Just going to pack it in good. You see that it is really thick because it comes out in pretty much one big piece. So you will need to work this just a little bit to get this well blended. Okay. Then we've got two other ingredients left. So we're going to use some vanilla extract. So a half a teaspoon of vanilla. You could go up to a teaspoon if you want more vanilla flavor. Or you could leave it out. Remember, you don't want to add too much liquid to this. And then we're going to do a good, generous pinch of kosher salt. You can also use sea salt. Okay, so a nice, thick pinch, about an eighth of a teaspoon total. And now instead of mixing with my spoon, I'm going to throw on some gloves. Okay, you could do this by hand. Um, I'm going to use gloves just because I need to be able to work quickly to getting this on the tray for you all. Um, so just some disposable gloves here. And I really want to work this mixture together. So the idea is that the heat from your hands will help start softening that coconut oil, right, along with the friction of the mixing motion, okay? 
So everything needs to get mixed together good. So I usually take a little bit of oats over that honey at first because that's the real sticky part. Get that blended in. And then look for those big pieces of the coconut oil and really get those broken up. You want to make sure that all of your oats have some coating of fat on them to get a real nice even toasting. Now, I already have my oven preheated to 300 degrees for this. So it is a low bake, right? We're just trying to gently roast this to bring out the flavors from the nuts to incorporate all that coconut oil, right? Get some toastiness on the oats. This already smells great. Now you can add other additions to your homemade granola. Like I said, you know, besides changing out the nuts and the dried fruits, you could add other spices to it, right? This one's going to be fairly neutral today to go with, you know, maybe a fruitier yogurt, you know, as a topping. But you could add things like cinnamon and nutmeg, some ginger, and one of my favorites is cardamom. It's a brown cardamom. Those great, especially if you use any kind of dried um, tropical or citrus fruits. So you want to see here, right, it kind of looks lumpy, right? That's what we're looking for is that those oats are slightly clumped together. Okay. So we have a really good solid mixture. Everything's got a good coating of oil on it. And we're all set. So we'll take one glove off here. Now I'm going to bring over my pan. Now for the pan... Just a sheet pan, my soap hat, right? If you're gonna use a tray, um, you can use some parchment paper, or you could just use your cooking spray to make sure that it's non-stick. Because we're gonna need to be able to stir this about every five minutes as we're cooking it. So all you need to do is just scoop out the entire mixture onto the sheet pan. Right, make sure you get all that good stuff in there. And then you want to spread this out okay, as much as you can so you get a nice, even layer across. Okay. You don't want to leave it bunched up in the center because this part won't toast evenly, right? And you'll get a lot of dark, burnt edges and still raw in the center. Okay. So this is going to take 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Um, it's going to depend on your oven right, if your oven runs hot or cold. Um, but like I said, I have this at, set at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna put this right in the center rack of the oven. Right. And after about five minutes, you wanna take it out, set it on top of your stove and stir it. So just grab a metal spoon or a spatula, give it a quick stir, put it back in, right? You can always rotate the tray at that point as well for more heat and browning. Every five minutes, check it. If you start to really smell strong smells of you know, nuts toasting and things like that, right? Make sure that you check it, right? You don't want this to burn. But I'm gonna show you one that was done earlier. Okay. So one thing that's hard to tell with granola is if it's going to be crunchy, right? So when it's still piping hot from the oven, even after 10, 12 minutes, whatever it happens to take for your oven, it may still feel, if you take a pinch of it, it's gonna feel still soft, right? Um, if you wanna know for sure before you put it back in and cook it too long, Take a little bit out, let it cool off to the side, a little spoonful of it, and then you'll know if it's actually crunchy. It's only going to get crunchy once it cools down completely, okay? So this is the finished granola here, right? You can hear some crunch there, right? Okay. So, but you've got to let it cool to tell if it's crunchy, okay? You also want to let it cool completely before you put it into any kind of storage container. If you don't, it's going to get soggy. And it could actually spoil because it's going to hold that humidity and moisture inside your container. I like to do everything in my mason jars because um, I have a bunch of them around the house from canning and things. And they're great storage jars, so you don't have to worry about bugs or critters or anything ever getting into them. Um, and they're pretty, right, because it's clear and you can see the nice jar of granola on the counter. Um, you could use, you know, a um, Tupperware-type container with a nice tight-fitting lid, or you could use a Ziploc bag. You don't have to store this in the fridge. This stays room temperature, right? So right on the counter, but you just want to, like I said, make sure that it's airtight type container, right? And then you can just take and put your granola in, right? You can hear that crunch, right? That's what you want to hear. But that's only going to happen when it cools down, right? 
Then you have your granola there for the morning, right? You can add this on top of your oatmeal. I like it personally with my favorite yogurts, right? Um, and then you just wanna make sure that you put a nice tight fitting lid on so that it stays sealed and then you have the mixture. Um, if you do different varieties, you probably wanna put a label on it too so that people know what's inside. So people in your family will know that one has pecans or walnuts or things like that, right? <clears throat> but you can vary those ingredients. You can vary the spices. So every time you make the granola, you can do something completely different, okay? So that's our easy homemade granola. Like I said, it takes about 10 minutes in the oven. It may take a little longer in your oven um, at home. If your oven runs a little bit hot, it might be a little quicker. So stay close to the oven. Don't go wandering off. Keep an eye on it. But you will start to smell it toasting, you know, that nutty kind of aroma coming from the oven. Um, let it cool completely and put it in an airtight container for storage. And this will last a few weeks um, for your yogurts and things like that. Okay. So that's our homemade granola for today.